Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 62. We have been learning, we have been doing the conversions of fractions into decimals into percentages and back and forth. Let's look at the very first problem we have today. We'll, we are, we'll be given percentage, uh, we'll be given fractions and our job is to convert all of these fractions into their respective decimals and their percentages, respective percentages. Here's the first one, 7, 7 40th. 7 40th, as we have done this before many times, what we, what we always uh, point out is the fact that when we have to convert a fraction into a decimal, our job should be to convert this bottom bar, the denominator, into 100 or something that comes as close to 100 as quickly as possible. Can we multiply 40 by a certain number so that it becomes 100 or something close to 100? In order, in order to realize what number we need to multiply 40 by to convert 40 into a 100, we have to first understand that 4 times 25, 4 times 25 is 100. Of course, there is nothing earth shattering. Everybody knows that. Well, if you understand that part, that 4 times 25 is 100, then it stands to reason that 40 times 2.5, we have just taken, moved the decimal place one place here, and added a zero to it. 40 times 2.5 is also 100. In other words, if we were to multiply 40 by 2.5, we should get 100 which is what we're going to do here. We're going to multiply top and bottom by two and a half. Multiply top and bottom by two and a half and we'll have a hundred at the bottom. And we're going to redo actually. I'm going to actually, we're going to actually redo it just to convince ourselves. 40 times two and a half. 40 times two and a half is what we're looking at. And how do we multiply, how do we multi go about multiplying 40 by two and a half? It's very simple. 40 times two 40 times 2 is 80, and 40 halves, well we know 2 halves make a 1, 2 halves make a 1, if you have 40 halves, that should make 20. In other words, half of 40 is 20, half of 40 is 20, there you go, there's your 100. So bottom becomes 100, now we have to figure out 7 times 2 and a half, let's do 7 times 2 and a half, shall we? Let's do 7 times 2 and a half, same exact logic will apply, nothing different. 7 times 2 is 14, and 7 halves, 7 halves, 7 halves are simply, 7 halves are simply 3 and a half. Because 2 halves are 1, 4 halves are 2, 6 halves make a 3, 6 halves makes a 3, 7 halves will have 3 and a half. That's it, 17 and a half. On the top we end up with 17 and a half, and therefore this is same as 17 and a half percent. Voila. The question was 748 is what percent? The answer is 748 is 17.5% 17 or 17 and a half percent or if they want it in decimal and decimal will simply be 175. That's all it is. Let's do the next one shall we? Let's do the next one. Try to do it yourself as soon as I set it up do it yourself. Here's the next one for you. Convert, convert 3 over 125 into, into decimals, into decimal, 3 over 125, 3, 3 over 125, I'm going to actually do it on the top, 3 over 125. There are two ways, there are a couple of ways we can manipulate it. We can, I'm going to show you both ways here. 3 over three and three over 125. We could actually convert the bottom into 100 as quickly as possible. And the easiest way to have 100 in the bottom is to simply multiply the bottom by 100. And if you multiply bottom by 100, you have to multiply top by 100. Well, now leave that 100 alone. That was the whole bloody point of getting that 100. Leave it alone because we're going to need it. Let's reduce this 125 with, with that 100. 100 has 4 25s and 125 has 5 25s. 
So simple, so far so good. So we end up with 3 fifth. We end up with 3 fifth times 4 over 100. We are almost there. 3 fifth is just 0 0.6 and 4 over 100 is 0 0.04. We are almost there as I said. So we end up with 0 0.6 times 0 .0, 0 0.04. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 4 is 24. The decimal is right here right now. This one has one decimal place. This one has two decimal places. In other words, we need to move our decimal places three spots. One, two, three. Decimal ends up here. And we need to put a zero. Let's see, that's our answer. So this whole thing boils down to 0 0.024. 0 0.024. And if they want the answer in percentages, the answer would be 2.4%. 2.4%. Percent, or if you like, two and two fifth percent. It all depends on how the answer was laid out in front of you. So that was one way. Other way, which is a little bit quicker way, other way, which is a little bit quicker way, is to simply realize that if you were to multiply, you see two fifty. Okay, listen carefully. Two fifty times four. Two fifty times four. Two fifty times four, of course, is a thousand. Nobody's going to argue with that. Instead of taking 250, if you were to take a half of that and multiply this by 2, that's 125. 125 times 8 is also 1000. Let's multiply the top and bottom by 8. 125 times 8 is 1000. So that's it, we're done. On the top we end up with 3 times 8, which is 24. On the bottom we end up with 1000, and that's just 0 0.024. Same as before. Or 2.4 percent or or 2 and 2 fifth percent anyway you want to look at it they all mean the same thing let's do one more let's do the next one convert convert 3 7 convert 3 7 into decimals and percentage. Again, our job as always is to make the bottom bottom part, the denominator, into 100 or something as close to 100 as possible, as quickly as possible, as, as efficiently as possible. So let's do that. 370 is what we have. 370 is what we have. Well, we know, we know that if you have 10 sevens, that's 70. 70 is nowhere close to 100. Let's add two more 7 to it. Let's add two more 7 to it. So that's going to be 14. That's 84. That's 84. 84 is still too far away from 100. If you were to add one more 7 to it, that's going to bring it up to 91. Let's add two more 7s. So we end up with 8 and 9. There you go. So how many 7 does 98 represent? 98 must represent the fact that 70 is 10 sevens, 14 is 2 sevens, that's 12 so far, and then another 14 is another 2 seven. So we have 14 sevens. 14 sevens and 98. In other words, if you want to multiply top and bottom by 14, and the bottom will end up with 98. And that's about as close as we're going to get to 100. 14 times 3, how much is 14 times 3? Well, we know 15 3 is a 45. 15 3s are 45. That, why, that we do know by heart. 15 3s are 45. We don't have 15 of them. We only have 14 3s. So instead of 45, it's going to be 42. 42 over 98, that's approximately 42%. 42%. Uh, is that an underestimation or overestimation? This is an underestimation because the correct answer is actually going to be is approximately. 42% or is something more than 40, 42 plus percent, something more than 42% because we're not dividing it by 100, we're dividing it by 98. So the real percentage is going to be something more than that. Do you understand? Let's do the next one. So that was 3 seventh. Let's do the next one. How about 5 eleventh? If you were to convert 5 eleventh into percentage, or approximate percentage, that's very simple. Multiply top and bottom by 9. We multiply top and bottom by 9, we end up with 45 over 99. 
that's about as close as 200 as we're going to get and that's approximately 45 percent a little over 45 percent because we're not dividing by 100 we're dividing by 99 let's do one more how about the next one is also next one is also very simple very straightforward and the next one is actually exact same thing as, as, as this one which is well not exact same thing but very close to it how about 2 ninth what percentage is 2 ninth approximately 2 ninth expressed in percentage is going to be how much approximately again we want to have 100 at the bottom or something close to it 9 times 11 is going to give us 99 just like before 9 times 11 since we are multiplying the bottom by 11 we must multiply the top by 11 and that is going to give us 22 over 99 which is about 22 percent about 22 percent that was 2 ninth let's do one more we need the room so I'm going to erase everything now just give me one second here is the next question for you I insist that as soon as I put it on the blackboard I insist that you pause the video and do it yourself I want we are looking for the decimal form and the percentage form of what is given to us here. Here's what's given. We're being asked to simplify 48 over 120 times 3 over 40. Go ahead, pause the video and do it yourself. And then we'll do it together. 48 over 120 times 3 over 40. There is no right way or wrong way of going about it. There are, there are many different ways of going about it. Whatever clicks in your mind. I see 48, I see 40. They are both multiples of 8. Let's divide top and bottom by 8. 48 has 6 8 and 40 has 5 8. So that's out of the way. Oh, there you go. I see a 12 and I see a 6. Let's divide top and bottom by 6. That will take care of this 6 and 12 will become 2 and 0 has no 6. So it becomes 20. That's it, we're done. 20 times 5, 20 times 5, oh that's very simple, 20, 20 times 5 is 100, and on the top we are left with only a 3. Well that was actually very simple. 3 over 100 is just 3%, or 0 0.03, depending on whether the answer choices are presented in fraction form, or percentage form, or decimal form. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. Again, same as before, simplify 9 fifth, 9 fifth times 35 over 12. Do it yourself. Pause the video and do it yourself. You will always get more out of it that way. And then you compare your work against the work we do together. 9 fifth times 35 over 12 well I see a 5 and I see a 35 let's divide top and bottom by 5 that will knock out this 5 and 35 will become 7 I see a 9 I see a 12 let's divide top and bottom by 3 that will make 9 into a 3 and 12 has 4 threes. that's it we're done we end up with 21 over 4 3 times 7 21 over 4 but 21 over 4 is not actually going to get us anywhere that's very difficult to figure out the percentage of the... Oh, 21 over 4, never mind. 21 over 4. 21 over 4 is can be written as... 21 over 4 can be written as... 20 over 4 plus... 1 over 4. 20, 20 over 4 is 5, so it's 5 and, 5 and a quarter. It boils down to 5 and a quarter, or if you like... 5.25. Five. Again, it all depends on how... They present the answer choices to you on the exam. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow, we'll learn how to compare how to compare fractions. When, they're given, when you're given two fractions in the exam, and, they ask, and, and we are being asked to compare and be able to tell which fraction is bigger, are you able to tell which fraction is bigger without having to do any lending cal calculation like that? We're going to learn that tomorrow, okay? Bye. Bye now.